One of the paradigms for, for the way in which we relate with people on the internet actually isn't social media, it's, it's e-commerce. Uh, and when we click and buy something on Amazon or any other uh, website, we have reduced a very complex, mediated and personalised experience to an utterly anonymous and simple experience. You know, the act of, for example, going into a bookshop, speaking to an assistant, discussing what books are good, uh, you know, uh, discussing what you like to read, being shown where the books are, making the purchase, that was a relatively rich and engaged and nuanced human experience in which you'd be looking at somebody's face, checking their body language, looking at their visage. I mean, that was a relationship. Now, that's completely gone at that point. Into that vacuum comes the avatar, comes the way in which people wish to project themselves into the notionally anonymous playing field uh, uh, of, of social websites. So, you know, it, it's as if the medium sucks away and strips you of all your contingent uh, characteristics as a person. You're free of your uh, of your gender, of your race, of your class, of your nationality, of your age, of your sexual identity, your appearance, all of these things that, you know, you might argue are in some way contingent to your being uh, are kind of gone. Uh, and, and the same is true, of course, with who, whoever you interact with. But in a way, I think the medium is the message here. Because the message is you can be whoever you want uh, in this medium. Uh, and but what people fail to realise, of course, is that it's true for everybody else as well. Uh, and what, they, what people who are kind of uh, gullible and in a sense are kind of nascent and untrained uh, in terms of personal bonds, bonds that have a contingent aspect, what they're very vulnerable to is the fact that people may be preying upon that exact gulf uh, between uh, who they think they're interacting with and who they really are interacting with. And, and of course, there are kind of obvious and egregious cases of this. I mean, the, the one that haunts everybody is, is the notion uh, of, of the paedophile grooming the child on the internet. But in fact, that's a particularly, that is just that, an egregious example that in a way seeks to diffuse the many, many lesser examples of this that are going on all the time. But when I log on to buy a book from a huge online retailer and that huge online retailer already puts up you know w self you 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 might like this or you might like that it seems to be posing as my friend but it's not saying to me w self this is a book of the kind that you've bought in the past but you know what you should really broaden your reading and i've noticed that you're rather gummed down in this sort of stuff and you might like to consider this or some interesting books on this subject are coming out or have you not thought you know and so on or it might even if it was my friend it might come up the large on online book retailer and say look you've been spending too much money on books recently don't you think you should you know get out a bit more and not sit there kind of buying stuff so you know, the, all sorts of aspects of, of the internet uh, masquerade or websites masquerade as potentially personalised relationships that of course are really anonymous at a very, very fundamental level. So the internet promises us the idea or various kind of websites promises the idea of actualising ourselves in an essential way and then in fact we fall victim to a much, much cruder kind of sorting uh, into types of people and I think, you know, if, if that's happening just with online retailing, of course in social networking sites it's happening all the time which is why they're such fertile grounds for all sorts of bullying and, and psychological manipulation. People's um, virtual friends are in inverse correlation to their actual friends and and that's surely because people who uh, actually find it difficult to develop the kind of social skills that are involved in retaining 
uh, and, and advancing friendships and keeping friendships uh, find it in some way kind of easier to operate in this virtual realm where they don't have to be who they contingently are. But the price to be paid for that is one of kind of loneliness. You know, some of the late Willie Donaldson said, you know, pr promiscuity is the M1 to loneliness. And there's a kind of uh, wanton promiscuity about the way in which you simply have to poke somebody or kind of send them a message or, you know, identify yourself on these social media sites and you're in some sense have a presence to this many people. I think the other phenomenon that of course is going on there is, is, is how much it links in to the celebrity culture and how much it's uh, a rather strange uh, uh, fulfillment of Warhol's, uh, you know, in the future everybody will be famous for 15 minutes. And, and I think that, you know, people's kind of rage and kind of anger that they're, that they're not famous uh, is also kind of worked off in, uh, through these social media sites, just as it's worked off through the spectacle of reality television shows, which of course are platforms for people who have no intrinsic talent at all, in other words, have no contingencies that would make them famous, are made famous. So the reality TV shows are, are, are like the TV version inverted of what's going on on these social media sites. And, and none of these are kind of, you know, to put it rather, rather simply, none of them are very nice. Uh, in terms of what happens to people psychologically. Of course all of these sites uh, can in some ways be used responsibly by people who have kind of well-defined boundaries. Uh, uh, but, you know, I, I, I sometimes wonder whether or not those kind of people uh, are not the ones who are particularly attracted to them. They seem inherently like, like a moth to a flame to attract people who are vulnerable.